everyone i hope you're doing well and staying safe in today's video we're going to be talking about an update to webdriver io i'm talking about its async and sync mode due to some changes that have been happening sync mode for webdriver io one of my favorite features will no longer be supported after node.js version 16. In this video, I'll be talking about what caused those changes, how WebDriver IO is pivoting to address the changes that are happening, how you can continue to use sync mode up until it will no longer be supported by WebDriver IO, how you can transition your sync project to an async project. I'll also give you some explanation on what async and what sync modes are, as well as how you can continue and move forward using async mode in your projects. Let's get started. So what happened? What caused this change? On the WebDriver IO documentation page for Sync and Async, it has a caution message that as of April 14, 2021, Sync mode will not be supported anymore starting from node version 16 due to some changes in Chromium. If you start a project with WebDriver IO, we recommend not to use sync mode anymore and the community is working on a transition plan and they have a request for comment that you can contribute to. Node Fibers was being used to support the sync mode. Now, based on an update to V8, Node Fibers no longer work. This affects the sync mode because WebDriver IO runs using Node node is an open source javascript runtime that runs on the v8 engine so if the v8 engine no longer supports node fibers and node fibers is what sync mode is built on then sync mode will no longer work so this breaking change means that versions of node 16 and greater will no longer be able to run the WebDriver IO sync mode. I am a bit sad about it because for me, I love writing my test automation synchronously as testing can be a step-by-step -step process. You navigate to a web page, you click login, you enter your username, you enter your password and you click the submit button and then you wait for the dashboard to show up. This is generally how test automation and testing in general flows in a step-by-step -step process. So for me, using synchronous made sense. As I said before, there is a RFC or a request for comments that WebDriver IO's Christian Broman has, and they are trying to see how WebDriver IO moves forward, given that we cannot use the WebDriver IO sync module. You can check that out and you can give your input if you think that there's a direction that it should go in or not. I want to give a big shout out to Christian Berman, one of the supporters and maintainers for the WebDriver IO project. He really took the time and turned around the sync mode and the async mode situation, and he created a document that we can all read. For many years, one of the selling features of the WebDriver IO framework was its synchronous API, especially for folks that were coming from more synchronous oriented languages such as Java or Ruby. It has helped to avoid race conditions when executing commands. But also, persons that are more familiar with promises tend to prefer synchronous execution as it makes the code easier to read and handle. I was one of those persons that really loved WebDriver IO because of its sync API. But I have to give big kudos to Christian because when I'm comparing the sync mode and the async mode, 
The main difference is that I have to now put a sink and a weight before each line. Yes, you're putting a weight before each line, but the way web driver IO still flows, the way I can still use all the command, I think web driver IO has a wide variety of other benefits in addition to its sync mode. So for me, WebDriver IO is still one of my favorite test automation framework. And not having the sync mode doesn't change my love and appreciation for WebDriver IO. Based on the changes, what I really like is that they have improved the asynchronous API and matched it with the synchronous one. Before, when you were chaining elements, you had to have like three awaits. And he has simplified that along with the WebDriver IO team. They have simplified this to just having one await. So in your page objects, your locators, your tests, you are now just using one await once it's inside an async function. So this is really good. And I want to send a big shout out to the WebDriver IO team for implementing this and updating the asynchronous API. You're probably now wondering what is async and what is await. Async is a type of function that you can have in JavaScript and it comes along with the await keyword that is permitted to be used within an async function. They act as syntactic sugar on top of promises, making asynchronous code easier to write and to read afterwards. It helps you to write asynchronous code, which are operations that allows you to move on to another task before the previous one is finished. In the same manner as you would write synchronous code, code that is run one after the other and is blocking, that is the first line has to complete before the second line completes. It allows you to write an asynchronous non-blocking function in that step-by-step -step manner as you would write an ordinary synchronous function. If you ensure that you have Node, NPM, Java, and you are running Visual Studio Code, if you follow these four commands and allow WebDriver IO to create for you a page object and a test file, then you should have WebDriver IO set up with a logging page and a logging test. I have also linked the instruction video for you. If we look in our logging page file, we see that we have an async logging function that accepts a username and a password. Within that function, each line has an await keyword. This is saying, before you move on to the line below me, allow me to finish. So we're going to be inputting the username, once that is finished, we input our password. Once that is finished, then we click on the submit button. If we did not have this await keyword, then entering the username, clicking the submit button could have happened in any order. So imagine you're trying to log in and before you enter the username or the password, the submit button has already been clicked on. That is going to result in your test failing. So because we want it to operate in a specific order, we have to use this await keyword in an async function to get it to follow the step-by-step -step that we are used to if we were using a synchronous function. Similarly, in our example test file, or it is an async function, we are awaiting for the login page to open, then we are calling the login function, and then we are awaiting the assertions that we have to be existing and to have text containing. So all of this is going to be run in the correct order that we want it to. In order for your code to run synchronously, you need to have the WebDriver IO sync module. So you can say npm install minus minus save at wdio forward slash sync. Once you have installed that, then you should now be able to run your test synchronously. Your async functions that you have should continue to work as well. As said on the WebDriver IO page and in this video, if you're starting a new project, ensure that you're using the async mode 
However, there are persons that already have their project in the sync mode and they are going to be converting it. This will take some time. So you can still continue running your synchronous code while you're in the process of switching over to async. So if we look in our logging page here, we see, as I said before, an async function. I have duplicated this and call it login sync. The only difference between both functions is of course the function name, logging and login sync to differentiate them. But along with that is the async keyword to denote that this is an async function and the await command to ensure that each line runs after the other. In the synchronous mode, we do not need that because we have just installed the sync module and it allows you to run your code synchronously so it automatically knows that you're going to wait for the username to be inputted the password to be inputted and then you click on the button so you don't need to explicitly await those things so if i wanted to change this to a async function i would just put async here and then for each line i would put await and this makes it an async function so if you're trying to convert your project from sync to async you can add the async keyword to your function to make it an async function and then you add the await keyword to each line within that function and everything should still work for your tests you would have the await keyword once it's inside an async function if your function isn't async then you'll get an error trying to run the await keyword. So you see that our its is async here, await keyword. I have the same function below, but it is a synchronous function. So I don't have the async keyword here and I don't have the await, but as you can see, they are the exact same thing apart from the async and the await. So that's the difference, the async and the await. So it should be okay for you going forward to use the async and the await. If I were to run these tests, they should both pass because they're both doing the same thing. One is just an async function and the next is a sync function. So as you could see, it logged in twice. So both work. So that's it. That's how you can convert your project from using sync mode to using async mode. This is how you can also continue to use sync mode while you're in the process of converting your project. Or if you want to continue using sync mode until WebDriver IO no longer supports it. But I would advise you to try to transition to the async mode. And if it is you're starting a new WebDriver IO project, use the async mode when you start. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.